So you've bought some shiny new RAM sticks for your computer. You've made sure that they're the right speed and they're the right voltage, and you even paid extra for that sick RGB lighting, bro. But when you furiously rip off the packaging and are just about to insert the modules into your motherboard, you notice a strange sequence of numbers on the stickers and start wondering what those mean. Is there some crucial specification you've missed before buying your RAM? These numbers here are called memory timings, and they are one of the factors that determine the performance of a DRAM module. But how does that work? Doesn't RAM frequency in megahertz already tell us how fast it goes? Not quite. While the clock speed can tell us how much data your RAM can send and receive per second, it doesn't tell us anything about latency, the delay between operations, which you can learn more about up here. That is where timings come in. They give you information about how quickly memory can be accessed before the data starts flying around. Let's start with the first number in the string. This is called cast latency. This is the time it takes for the RAM module to start responding to a request for data, measured in clock cycles. In general, this means that a lower cast latency is better, but because different RAM modules run at different clock speeds, you have to consider them together with the frequency to find the total real-world latency in nanoseconds using this formula. So check this out. Slower clocked RAM can effectively be quicker if it has a lower cast latency, something to keep in mind when buying your memory. Though remember, your speed is still going to be more important, generally speaking. But what about those other numbers? The second is a mouthful, row address to column address delay, or TRCD. You see, RAM is set up in a grid, and your computer needs to access a particular row before finding which column of that row has the piece of data that it wants. So this number expresses the small delay between row and column access. The third number is row precharge time, or TRP, referring to the latency involved in opening a new row. And the fourth is row active time, or TRAS, the minimum number of clock cycles that a row must stay open to ensure the data is read or written properly. That's why this one is longer than your other timings. And how does all of this affect the way that you configure your RAM modules? When you first slot them into your motherboard, most modern BIOSes will have a preloaded XMP profile that you can enable to ensure that these modules are running at their rated speed, voltage, and timings. But if you want to get the fastest speeds possible, you can actually lower or tighten your timings. Then run a stress test like Memtest 86 Plus to validate that your changes aren't causing any system instability. I would recommend changing each of the first three numbers by an increment of one, and then validating in between, perhaps giving your RAM or memory controller a bit more voltage if things look unstable. But to be sure, check Intel or AMD's recommended voltages to make sure you're not going too high. Once you've done that, adjust your TRAS accordingly, and you're pretty much done once your RAM is stable. Although it's been a while since tightening timings has given a noticeable real-world performance boost in most applications, early reports are indicating that RAM speeds matter far more with AMD's new Ryzen chips than on the Intel side. So if you really want to dive into the world of enthusiast tinkering and you've got a Ryzen-based system, you might want to give adjusting your timings a shot. At the very least, it'll be something else to experiment with if you've ever gotten tired with playing with the RGB effects on your computer. Computer. Tunnel Bear VPN lets you tunnel to 20 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as if you are in a different country. They have easy to use apps for iOS, Android, PC, and Mac, and they also have a Chrome extension. Just choose a country in the app, turn Tunnel Bear on, and watch as your bear tunnels your internet connection to your new location. When you turn Tunnel Bear on, two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and your public IP address gets switched so that you show up as if you're in that other country. They also have a top-rated privacy policy and do not log user activity. You can try out Tunnel Bear VPN with 500 megabytes of free data with no credit card required. And if you choose to get a year of unlimited data, you can save 10% by going to tunnelbear.com slash Linus. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked the video, dislike it. Get subscribed to see all the rest of our videos and hit the little bell icon so you get a notification every time a video of ours goes live. Also, check out Channel Super Fun. I've been on there again.
It's been like twice in the last four or five months. So that was fun. It was cool. We shot some Nerf rival guns. I don't know when that's actually going to show up. It might be like a few months from now. It might be before this video happens. So just stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys next time.